more I get closer to God, the more I look at the girls, because we live around the host road, and all night long, and you see them, and it's so sad. I mean, I can understand, you know, but the girls are numb. They're not getting no sexual pleasure out of it. Yeah, and, yeah. and then you see them do that little act of, of blowjob or whatever, some strange dude, all type of diseases, which a lot of us have dealt with, probably I have. But when you look at it like that, it's just sad, you know? And then they run straight to the dope man, and, and then they starve, and then they're dying. Four people have died in our building, you know what I'm saying? We're in a, we're in a, a HASA building, okay? Four people have died from, from cracks and this, and the prostitutes is dying, and it's just sad now, so I'm just... I just see it, it don't look it don't look fun no more, you know. Right. Like it used to when I was young, go get a little piece on, from the corner. It don't look like that now. It's, it's sad. Cause they're killing themselves. Like the call girls, you know, that's that's just as sad, but it's a little different, you know, than than the uh, than the crack holes and the heroin the hookers. And besides the money. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the money, but they, they, it's a little different. They not necessarily turn them right around and just a slave to drugs. They actually some of them are trying to on a business with sex, which is slightly different, but most of them still molested. I don't know most of them, but I, I do surveys, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what happened? And they all say, every stripper I ever stripped with, girl stripper, every hookup, it was all molested as little girls, so they got turned out sexually right. to a point where they don't really, their body doesn't mean nothing to them, so. I just say a little thing, but once they get old, you know, we just try to get the young girls, because I ran children program, we just try to teach the young girls, because once they get old like that, ain't nothing you can really do, you know what I'm saying, to change them, and it's sad. You know, we became boyfriend and girlfriend, but I think if we wasn't close like that, it'd be hard just to, if somebody's not like a wife, so it's just sad, you know? So how long have you, how long have you been stripping? Oh, that or was how long years did you ago, strip? four years. <laughs> For four years? Yeah, that and was And what, what type clubs did you... What type you? club? Yeah, that was in New Jersey, man, let me see. You know, we used to just call the agent and jump in the car, and we would do a lot of private shows. I mean, it's, uh, I forget, man, that was, that was years ago. It's about eight years ago. You know, nine years ago, I promoted my own strip shows. I used to promote like promote, private parties or clubs. private parties and clubs. But we mainly do uh, not the Zanzibar, but down in, in East Orange. It's a club downtown East Orange, and I forget it's closed now. But it was it was a rocker back in there. But yeah, I did that for four years. Sleazy, uh, prostituting a few times. How, you know? How'd you find How'd you find your uh, your co partners or the other guys that that strip uh, uh, in, in the business? Uh, Were they going through the same problem? Uh, bisexual, I think they like me more than the ladies did. <laughs> but you can't tell by looking at it because they be so big. But they cool. My, my manager was bisexual. He was like my best friend. They cool. Just most of them been in jail. And, you know, I, I don't know about their, their uh, prostitution things. But a lot of you take $150 or $250 or $800 for the weekend. I got like $1,500 for a weekend. You know, with some big lady. But it was, it was cool. I, I was on the stripping side back then. I didn't start it. Uh, prostituting really to towards the end and I was by myself and I didn't do that for about five times four or five times and I had liked the ladies anyway right. it's a little different man but yeah most of the dudes it's such a freaky industry most of the dudes in that are going to be freaks from something you know it's hard <laughs> you to did, jump around you did what like five times what what did you do five uh, times the prostitute okay yeah that's it so like like five five uh, clients or five five one time five okay. times I didn't do it a lot because I started uh well, I got blessed to start making a lot of money vending. And it was start insulting me because they like to talk down to you and order you around. And, you know, they want to take out their frustrations on you. And I'm like, you know, I don't even need your money. I don't need your little $200. Right. But I got blessed and cocky as a man. But the girls are broken down. $7, you know, they right. do anything. So I guess, talk about, I guess, even if someone gave you $200, $500, $1,000, a $1 million, we still have our standards as people. Yes. We might go together. Are there things that... <laughs> <laughs> Are there things? A million dollars say we're going together? Well, maybe not a million. <laughs> we push it. Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, dude, that's that organization right there, right? Exactly. <laughs> no, that was hard one. Is it? Uh, you said a million? Dude. Maybe not a million, but... I nah. mean, Lord, you know, I can feed a You know what? I don't profit too, but a million, <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> we all be there. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I mean, I totally said, million, man. So I guess both of you, I guess both of you, what, what would your standards be? What would you stop, draw the line I, I think we jokingly say that about it, you know, because we'd be out here, we meet people, but like I'm the minister, so I can't, it'd be said to be so much for me to do that and or the minister. And finance the to, finance the first sermon by turning a big trick with a whole yeah, lady. Yeah, it would have to be a very good reason. For oh us Lord, to do that. oh Lord. I mean, that's thousands, 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 thousands. Yeah. I, I can't see that because the Lord gives me money. Yeah. I just need more. You know what He giving me what I need, so I don't want to push it. 
That's why I go to hell. So if you had, if you had, like, what, what's your favorite scripture, man, of, of the minister? What's your favorite scripture? Oh, the one I'm thinking oh, now. What would be your favorite scripture? Oh, the one I'm power. thinking now. I know about the scripture, but the one I'm thinking now, being upset as I am about the devil, destruction on my father's earth, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. We can't do nothing about it but stand for him and then he'll decide when it's time for us to do it like we're supposed to do it because thou shalt not kill. And that's a rough one because out here I think about her. these people irritate me, you know, some really stupid people. And with that sign, they always disrespecting her and I can deal with it, but it's just, and then we in the welfare hotel, everybody just broken. I don't want to call them stupid, but damn, you know, everybody still get high, always, it's so, and then the, the, you know, gangsters all over the place. It's just, it's just, New York is messed up, man. You know, and the streets are terrible. You know? Would you ever think about moving from the area? No, we, well, you know, we, we don't have much say, so, you know, Bridget, you want to You can tell. Okay, Bridget contracted HIV okay. out there on the stroll, as every hooker out there mm -hmm. must have, you know, so she qualified for that. We okay. can't have much say, so, and all those type of places where they pay a large portion of your rent okay. are in crack areas. Everyone we ever been in. Every hotel is a crack infested hotel, and we can't really afford nothing nice. Uh, New York is the most expensive place I ever been in. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of stuck in the ghetto. That's what we need to be, but that's so, where the pain is. But. Here's a question, well, Bridget. Yeah. Um, not that you've given us your 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 circumstances. Um, have you? How long had you uh, had HIV, and were you still out on the stroll while you? Oh, you had it? Were you still addicted to drugs at the time? Or? As a matter of fact, I contracted HIV before I became a prostitute. Mm -hmm. You know, I I just happened to have sex with the wrong person. And we ended up staying together two years, and then he finally told me while he was on his deathbed that he had HIV. Mm -hmm. So that's how I contracted it. And yeah, I was out there prostituting with HIV, but I used to tell my people to wear condoms, okay. and you know there was no uh, oral sex going involved as far as them going down on me. But I would go down on them, but because it was safer for me to do it like that. But most of them I told to wear condoms, and they all wore. Most of them did wore condoms. Some of them didn't. And it was in the back of my mind, you know, I felt a little guilty about being out there like that. And that's another reason why I had to, I had to quit because it was, it was getting to my conscience. Right. You know, I didn't know if I was passing it around or not. 